Hi, we're at Changi Airport and today we are flying to New York and so we are going to be talking about price discrimination. So what exactly is price discrimination? It's the practice of charging different groups of consumers different prices for the same good for reasons not arising from cost differences. Now, so when we talk about price discrimination, right, we have to investigate whether or not this good is actually a different good. That's why you're actually charging a different price, right? So let's see, is the premium economy class the same as business class? Obviously, it's not the same, right? So you see, you look at the premium economy class, there's a Q, right? Okay, so um, what the reason why I'm comparing between premium economy and, and business class and not economy versus business class is because this flight that I'm on only has premium economy and business class. Okay? Right, so again, once again, you can have a look. Look at the, the queue. It's not very it's not very long, but there's a queue. Let's pop over to business class and see how is it like at business class. Okay, right, so let's take a look at business class and first class. Okay, you can see the difference. Premium economy class there was a queue and look at business class, there's no queue. And of uh, course first class there's no queue as well. Right, so it's clearly a different good, right? If you pay for business class, you don't have to wait. But if you pay for premium economy class, of course, you have to queue up and wait. Okay, right, so um, let's move on. So the difference between premium economy versus the price difference between premium economy and business class, is this a case of price discrimination? Now, if you think about it, the price of um, a premium economy ticket is $4659 and the price of a business class ticket is $9. $1,800. The price difference is almost double. So is this a case of price discrimination or not? Let's go on board and find out. Right, so let's look at the business class product. Um, you have a much bigger screen here and the leg space is also a lot more. So let's take a look at the seat. Okay, we can actually convert this seat to a, la a flat lie bed. We can actually convert this, this seat to a flat bed. So this is the cool part about the seats. So you can actually have a good sleep and rest during the entire flight. So that's the difference between uh, business class versus premium economy. And um, let's take a look at the amenities kit. They give you slippers, they give you socks, they give you a eye patch to sleep. And of course you have this damn huge, you have this super huge flat screen TV. So premium economy class is really not too bad. You can see that the seats are a little bit um, have a bit more leg space than your regular economy class. But of course they're not as huge as business class seat. You can see that premium economy class is about I don't know the amount of space that it takes up is about one quarter of business class seats. So it's about half of business class seats. So the, the seats are a lot narrower. Of course you can't lie down on them, but uh, you can have quite a good recline. And of course, you do not have such a large screen. So we can take a look at the screen. So the screen is a little bit smaller. Right, so as you can see, Business Class and Premium Economy, they are quite different products. And because they are different products, we cannot say that they are an example of price discrimination. Uh, the amenities are different for uh, Premium Economy versus uh, Business Class. So of course, you still get these really nice headphones, but I think they are just regular headphones. While just now I saw the headphones there, they are Bose headphones which are more premium. And of course the food that you're going to get is quite different. Shall we look at the menu? Shall we look at the menu of premium economy class? What, what are we going to have for breakfast in the short while? Wow. So let's see. So of course you see here I don't have that much big space. So I can only my leg out a little bit at this point. So now I want to talk about this concept called first degree price discrimination. So first, this first degree price discrimination is where whereby a firm is able to charge each and every consumer the maximum price that they're willing to pay. So in the case of first degree price discrimination, you we have actually very very few real life examples of first degree price discrimination. But SQ actually has an example of first degree price discrimination. How so? Now a few days before your flight, um, there's this there's this option called My SQ Upgrade, which is by invitation, where Singapore Airlines will send you an email asking you if you would like to 
um, bid for the spare access seats on an air school flight. So for example, I'm travelling on premium economy and there are empty business class seats available. So let's say if there were 5 business class seats that SQ wants to release and there are 20 bidders. There are 20 people who would like to bid for an upgrade. So all of these 20 different bidders, they will all individually bid for a different price. So let's say for example, someone bids $1,000, another bids $1,000, another bid $1,000. So the top 5 bids, even if they were all paying, they were all bidding for different prices, they will all be paying different prices in the end to get their seats. So only the top 5 bids will get a free up, they will, will get a paid upgrade uh, to business class. Uh, so that's an example of first degree price discrimination that we can actually find on Singapore Airlines. And if we talk about second degree price discrimination, it's called block pricing. So for example, if someone is sitting beside me, he or she might have paid for a ticket that is much lower than mine because he or she bought it from a tour agent. So when a tour agent books ticket, they book in bulk. So they are able to actually take advantage of a lower price as opposed to someone who books over the web. Okay, so let's have uh, another person here. So for example, another person here bought another ticket that is of a different price from mine. Why? Perhaps this person bought his or her ticket last minute. So we say that if the person bought a ticket last minute, their demand is likely to be very, very price inelastic. So the meaning of demand being price inelastic means that there is a very urgent need for it. For example, there's a business meeting that he or she may have to attend. So I'm going to, I'm going to review my price for this air ticket. It's about $1,500. But if you bought this ticket last minute, you'll probably have to pay the full price, which is about $4,500 for the full price of premium economy class ticket. So SQ charges um, this difference in, in pricing is what we call third degree price discrimination. So third degree price discrimination is where you charge different groups of consumers with different PD values a different price. And lastly, let's go on to talk about third degree price discrimination. So what is third degree price discrimination? It is the idea that you charge different groups of consumers, usually with different PD values a different price. Now so two person, again person, let's go on with person A and person B. Now person A may have paid maybe $2,000 for an air ticket, while person B pays only $800 for an air ticket. Why would person A pay $2,000 while person B pays $800 when they're sitting side by side in perhaps economy class? Now the reason that that occurs is because um, the person who paid $2,000 probably bought the ticket last minute perhaps at the airport. That would suggest that this person has an urgent basis of going on this trip and therefore the demand is very price inelastic. So the airline can charge someone who, is, who has a PED with a demand price inelastic a very high price because one demand will fall less than the cost really increasing their total revenue. Whereas someone who purchased the air ticket months in advance will probably be planning say for example for holiday where the demand is very price elastic, they can switch to other airlines to buy from, they can choose to go somewhere else for holiday, they can choose to take a train for the holiday instead of uh, buying the air ticket. So that is the concept of third degree price discrimination where you charge different groups of consumers different prices. Now a person sitting on economy class versus business class, is it price discrimination? The answer is no. Now remember the definition of price discrimination is that you have to charge different groups of users different prices for the same group of service. Now um, business class and economy class obviously is very different. Now on this trip, um, I've decided to take two very different journeys. On my trip here from um, Singapore to Berlin, I took a budget flight, right? And um, over here, on my flight back from Istanbul to Singapore, and I'm at the airport now in Istanbul, I am taking a business class flight because I had some credit card miles that I could change for. So on this business class flight, it's a different product, it's a different service. For example, um, we were given a fast track ticket that allowed us to you know, skip the queues at the um, customs, the, the passport control. So um, people on economy class, they had to spend at least 45 minutes to clear the customs, while you need us less than 5 minutes to clear the customs. And also, um, this is the waiting area for business class. You can see we are given a very comfortable waiting area. And over there, you can see that the waiting area is for economy class. And there's a lot more comfortable. So in general, the service is different. On business class, you generally don't have to wait for things to happen. Well, for, for economy class, you have to queue. And on top of that, um, the business class seat, of course, is more spacious, there is better food, and the seats are a lot more comfortable. So later, we'll take a look at um, what's going on on the business class seat as opposed to the economy class seat. Right, so as you can see, um, if you take the business class seat, you'll get different perks like, uh, you see here, it says priority lane for premium passengers. 
Now this shows that uh, this is not a case of price discrimination, but rather it's actually uh, a different product altogether. So for price discrimination, you have to be charging even consumers for the same good or service that are not associated with cost differences. But you can see that clearly cost differences associated with the business class seat as opposed to the economy class seat. So you cannot say that it is price discrimination. Thank you. 